<laughs> How does it feel? It feels Be amazing. First one to win. <laughs> it feels incredible. I'm so, like, I feel so incredibly grateful to be able to represent women in this way and to show the world that we are every bit as capable. I've emphasized the heart and the connection and the love and how much being in this place has been a relationship. And I feel like that's something really special that women often can bring. To be an influence for young women, to be a role model for young girls and show them what they're capable of. To be the role model that I wish I had had as a young woman. It just, it's so powerful. It means so much to me. Wow, that was Wonia Don Tebow, the first female winner of Alone Frozen, a show on the History Channel that drops survivalists in the Canadian Arctic with only a few supplies to see how they can make it in near unsurvivable conditions. Wonia is detailing her experience in her debut memoir entitled Never Alone, a solo Arctic survival journey. It is so nice to meet you. That was so incredible to watch that. You could really feel the power in that moment. Um, but my, I guess I want to hear more about you. And I know the answer to this question tells us a lot. Why did you decide to do that? Yeah, that's a wonderful question. Honestly, I had never pictured myself living in such an extreme environment, mm -hmm. but heading into the wilderness to live with only the resources that I could gather from it has been the focus of my life. And so getting to actually apply those skills for the long term was the realization of one of my dearest dreams. So um, I'm, I'm told that you never felt at home in the modern world. Is that correct? I was always one of those people who felt like they were born in the wrong time. You know, that what I was supposed to be doing was hunting and gathering. And even as a kid, that's what all of my childhood games revolved around. So getting to actually do it as an adult was amazing. There's hunting and gathering and then being dropped in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> okay, with freezing conditions. So uh, I know you have, you have it all chronicled in the, in the amazing book, but what are some of the most harrowing moments you, mm. you confronted? Yeah, that's a great question. The, the cold, certainly, the very long-term starvation. I mean, this, this book is about my first time on Alone, which was Alone season six. And I, you can see, I'm a, I'm a small woman. I'm 5'4". Yeah. I dropped 50 pounds out there. Oh. So it was incredibly physically what? grueling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. So those were all harrowing, but the being there wasn't anywhere near as harrowing or frightening to me as as one might think or as I thought honestly going in because the beauty of the place and feeling so wanted and seen and supported by this incredible wild landscape really balanced all of the challenging parts and made it overall a beautiful, beautiful experience. You're dropped alone in the Arctic and your takeaway, which you, you write about beautifully in the book, is that this experience brought on you more healing than suffering. Can mm -hmm. you explain that? Because you were potentially freezing to death and starving <laughs> to death. Okay, that seems sure. like a lot of suffering to me. Right, yeah, well, and it is a good example of the fact that whether something is suffering or healing to transformative really has more to do with our mental, emotional makeup and how we engage that experience. Is the healing later or in the moment? <laughs> Both, honestly, what? sure. I think that one thing was, as I talk about in the book, that, you know, I was a, I was a bookworm. I was the proverbial kid who got picked last for the softball team. Like, mm -hmm. I did not believe in my physical capacity. So being out there was very healing in terms of my self-worth and image and ideas of myself. But also, I literally had a lot of long-term chronic health issues clear up out there. What? Yeah. I used to have a lot of joint pain. I had all of these chronic issues. But when we go with out eating, there's a thing that happens called autophagy, where our mm -hmm. body kind of eats itself, and it starts with the the less functional parts, like the garbage that's sitting around in our bodies. It actually metabolizes those for energy, and so I had long-term shoulder issues clear up. I had had issues with my Achilles tendon. I felt more strong and vital in the years following that experience than I had in my 20s and 30s. And talk about a cold plunge. <laughs> That's right. a cold plunge. That's yes. living in freezing conditions 
endless freezing conditions. For sure, yeah. Not just hours, days, weeks. Well, and when you have no warm place to go to, you tend to acclimate to the environment as opposed to when we live in cold climates and then we go to our toasty 70 degree house, then our body doesn't adjust and so the cold feels colder. So it was frigid and yet I got used to it so it didn't feel as terrible as it might otherwise. You are incredible. The new book is entitled Never Alone, A Solo Arctic Survival Journey. Wonia Tebow, thank you very much and congratulations on the book. Thanks for coming on this morning. Thank you so much, Mika. And